Okay. So we're talking about Wag the Dog, 1997 by Barry Levinson. So that's the sort of thing that you might describe in an essay, for example. So 1997, you're going to be using the director Levinson's name a fair bit. So keep that in mind. Uh, we've got this quote here to give us some context. So this is a saying in English, because a dog is smarter than its tail. If the tail was smarter, the tail would wag the dog. So this is kind of gives us a good insight into the film overall. It's telling us that uh, if things were sort of, it's kind of like saying if, if pigs would fly, it's similar to that expression. It's saying if the tail was smarter than the dog, then the tail would be the one sort of in charge. And this film is all about how rather than the people that should be in charge, the president in this case, or the leaders, the people in charge are those that should be a small part who are the people that are sort of doing media publicity and making things look shiny and professional. So we've got some characters here just to give us some context. Uh, these are some words or some vocabulary that you might like to use when you're commenting on these characters. Conrad Breen, he's sort of the Mr. Fixit. That's what he's referred to as by his assistant. He's very political, calculating, scheming, which means sort of like dastardly, uh, kind of up to no good. He's organized, he's calm and he's anonymous so he he will never get sort of reward for the things that he do he does but his job is to sort of keep things uh, going smoothly and to fix up any problems as they arrive arise so your job is to think about what is his role in the film what does he carry out and what is his purpose so how does he fit in with all the other characters and how does he keep things moving along it might be helpful for you to sort of draw up kind of like I don't know, a little bit of sort of a hierarchy, who is at the top, who is at the bottom, or some sort of a chart, like let's say this is the president, and then this is sort of an organizational chart, this person reports to this person. It might be worth doing something like that to help you picture how all the characters fit together. There's not too many characters, but something like that might be cool. Then we've got Stanley Motz, so he's the rich celebrity, he's very calm, he's experienced, he's worldly, which means he knows all a lot of things about the world. He's well traveled, he's connected, and he's hungry for fame. So to me, the most important scene is that when uh, our previous character we just mentioned arrives, uh, he is very relaxed. He's in no rush to help out. So he's being visited by what we probably think of as kind of the a very important person, but he's very blase about it because he's worked with famous people and he's done all sorts of things in his life. So again, what is his role? In the film so how does he fit into it i guess he only appears in the film sort of by chance and he's had a, a long life before him that he describes often about this is nothing and i've done all this before so it might be worth commenting on maybe his history and how his history informs his present so all the things that he's done how they help out his present situation so this is, to me, really useful. This helped me to sort of understand the film and how it was all working. So we just got some images of different parts of the film here. But to me, the best way to think of it is that there are three levels. So we've got level number one is kind of the, the world, the real world, whatever, whatever you want to call that. Uh, then we've got sort of Mott's world. So the things that he does around media and then we've got the news or the media if we want to use a different word so what we're going to talk about first is the the war inverted commas that isn't really happening what is happening in the world so in albania nothing's happening that's why we have this black screen there's nothing happening albania isn't at war nothing's really happening there it's just business as usual okay moving on to mott's world He's creating this scene using a green screen or a blue screen of these sort of this war happening in this young girl played by Kirsten Dunst being in this terrible situation. So he's creating something. He's sort of producing things for them. And then we have the media or the news or the TV. And this is this is what we see. So between in, in the real world, Albania, nothing's happening in the world of Motts, Stanley Motts, he's creating this world, this reality, and then on the media, this is what we see, sort of the finished product, the final version, and all those discussions about which cat and what coloured cat kind of 
all add up to the message that they're sending out to the world through the media. And again, sort of the wider world, this is what it looks like. So we've had Albania, nothing's happening. We've got the sort of creation of the media by Stanley Motts. And then we've got the real world as viewed on TV. And then we've got the real world itself here. And it was actually quite difficult to find footage of the real world because it's shown so infrequently. So as the film is happening, you kind of have to keep in mind these three things are taking place. So they're kind of Stanley Mott's world. He's creating things. Then it's appearing on TV. And then there's the real world to consider as well. So, and most often the real world isn't something that's being directly shown to us as the audience. We have to sort of picture or imagine what's happening. So there'll be three main themes that we'll be talking about. Perception is the way that you view things. So this glass can either be half empty or half full. If you're being positive, it's half full. If you're being more negative, it's half empty. So for perception, you're probably talking about the way that the real world views things. And you're going to be talking about Stanley Motts and his world and how he shifts perception or diverts attention or something like that. So how are people being shaped to think in a certain way or believe certain things? Deception is tricking people. So this almost certainly you'll be talking about Stanley Motts, of course, and his work and Mr. Fixit and how it all works together to trick people, to deceive people. So the main thrust of the film is that over here there is this uh, scandal happening, but constantly sort of distractions are thrown up. Things to deceive and to cover up and to disguise. Things like throwing the shoes up onto the, the uh, power lines, let's call them. That's to deceive people, to trick people, to keep people distracted. Then we've got manipulation. So this we're thinking about uh, probably the final scene where Stanley Mott sort of says, all right, I want kind of fame. I want credit. I want all this sort of stuff. And th he is finally manipulated in the sense that we understand him to be killed by a CIA agent. So manipulation is managing people and forcing them to do certain things. So you might even talk about uh, the pretend the actress who played the Albanian girl being manipulated, being forced into this thing. Uh, and there's a number of different examples, but manipulation is getting people to do what you want. I hope these ideas give you some starting points and some vocabulary and some concepts to explore in your writing.